Hello everyone. Welcome to the 16th lecture for our course Irrigation Engineering and Hydraulic Structures. So in this lecture we are going to solve a numerical problem based on Kennedy's theory. So as we know that we are using Kennedy's theory to design alluvial canals, right? So in previous video we have discussed the steps we are supposed to follow to design a canal by using Kennedy's theory, right? These were the steps. The first step was critical to find critical velocity. Then second step was cross-sectional area. Third step was to find parameters of canal. Then fourth step was to calcul calculate hydraulic radius. And then fifth step was to find mean or actual velocity. Then at the end, we were comparing the values of V and V naught. On the basis of these two conditions, we can uh, either finalize our design or we need to redo the calculations by changing the depth if V is not equal to V naught. So these were the steps. Let's try to solve this problem. The statement given to us is saying that we are supposed to design an irrigation canal. Okay, we are supposed to design an irrigation canal or uh, which is carrying 50 meter cube per second. Sorry, which is carrying 50 meter cube per second. Let me highlight this. There is a mistake in unit. There is 50 meter cube, right? 50 meter cube per second. This is not 50 meter, it's 50 meter cube. 50 meter cube per second of discharge. And what is given to us? The first thing we are asked is that we are supposed to design first thing is that we are supposed to design right an irrigation canal which is carrying 50 meter cube of discharge discharge q is given to us which is 50 meter cube and the canal is to be constructed on a slope of slope is given to us which is 1 into 4000. The critical velocity ratio is equal to 1.1 for the soil and Cotter's coefficient is given to us which is 0.023. Right? So we have discussed all these points previously. The first thing we need to know is whenever someone asks you to design a canal that means that you need to find what design means we need to find we need to find the first thing is by design we mean we need to find the width of canal then uh, depth of canal and then we need to find slope of canal okay these are the important things we need to find if we are able to find these things that means that our design is complete so design means we need to find width, depth and slope. Other than that, we can also find critical velocity and actual velocity. So if you find all these things, that means that we have designed the canal. So we need to design a canal 
and that canal is carrying 50 meter cube of discharge that means that the discharge which is q right discharge is given to us which is 50 meter cube per second so that canal or channel is carrying and its capacity discharge capacity is 50 meter cube per second which is q right and the channel is to be constructed on a slope of 1 in 4000 slope is given to us and this slope is actually this is bed slope okay this is bed slope which is 1 in 4000 as we have discussed previously that if slope is not given what you are supposed to consider if slope is not given to us let me show you if slope is not given to us where was that uh, let me check it out let me check it out okay this one right as we said that you can see here for bed slope which is s if slope if not given then we can assume slope as 1 1 by uh, 3500 to 1 by 5000 right if it is not given but in this question the slope is already given to us so this is s bed slope right s which is bed slope this is given to us and the critical velocity ratio critical velocity ratio what is this this is CVR we call it CVR right which is 1.1 as we have discussed what is CVR in the first step this one right this M is known as CVR critical velocity ratio and its value we have discussed that its value if it is not given for upper Bari Doha canal system we consider it 1 for coarse sand it is in between 1.1 to 1.2 for fine sand the value of critical velocity ratio m is 0 0.8 to 1 but in this question we are already given the value of critical velocity ratio okay cvr or it is represented with m this is given to us for this while and then again we are given with the cutter's resistivity coefficient which is 0 0.023 what is uh, cutter's coefficient resistivity coefficient this one right this is cutter's formula and cutter's resistivity uh, coefficient is n which is given to us so this is n cutter's resistivity coefficient So this is the data given to us before solution we can write down the given data let's reduce the size and change the font style select and then text okay color will be blue okay let's write down the given data what is given to us the data given to us first thing is this discharge right which is equal to q q is given to us which is equal to 50 50 meter cube 50 meter cube per second this is given to us and the second thing given to us is bed slope which is represented with s right and bed slope is given to us which is 1 in 4000 or which means 1 divided by 4000 or you can say it 1 ratio 
four thousand. Okay, you can write it in three ways. And as we know that slope is unitless, right? And the next thing which is given to us is C uh, V R, right? Critical velocity ratio which is equal to C V R or it is represented with small m and the value is 1.1 again this is a ratio so it is unitless the next thing given to us is cutters coefficient which is equal to we represent it with n right which is equal to 0 0.023 so this is the given data we need to design the channel by using Kennedy's theory right so let's start let's start the solution for solution our first step is step one what was our step number one step number one was find the critical velocity right which is v naught we need to find v naught in the first step so the first step is finding v naught for v naught the formula we got is as we know that v naught is equal to V naught is equal to M C1 Y raised to the power C2, right? And here C1 is a constant. This is equation 1. Let's write it as equation 1. As we know that C1 is equal to 0 0.55 and C2 is equal to 0. 6, 4, right? And we don't have the value of y, right? For y, as we said that in the first step, we are going to assume the value of y. And that assumption is uh, dependent upon the discharge value, right? The discharge given to us is 50 meter cube per second. So let's see the table for 50 meter cube per second. This is the table, right? In the first step. Our uh, discharge value lies in this range okay 40 to 80 so our discharge is 50 right so for that we need to take the value of depth y as 2.5 meter got it so let's take y depth is equal to 2.5 meter it is assumed right and first trial this is our first trial and this value is taken from from table got it we got all the values now we can put these values and we can get the value of v naught. v naught is equal to the value of m is given to us in the question. Here is the value of m, which is 1.1, right? So 1.1 into value of c1 is 0 0.55, and y 
we assumed y is 2.5 meters and the power is c2 c2 is 0.64 right solve it and you will get the value of v naught which is critical velocity so the value of v naught is going to be 1.087 1.087 unit is meter per second right we are done with our first step let's move to the second step what is our second step step number two is area of cross section which is a we need to find this okay so let's find out area of cross section in step two what was the formula to find out the area of cross section the formula we go out to find out the area of cross section is area required is equal to q divided by discharge divided by critical velocity right if you don't know about the steps you can go to the previous lecture and you should go through these steps first so q is given to us which is 50 meter cube per second right it is given to us in the question divided by v naught we already just found out the value of v naught which is 1.087 meter per second by calculating this you will get the area of cross section as 45.998 45.998 meter square and one important thing is that you must try to keep the same number of decimal decimal points up uh, decimal points right like in this case we are uh, placing three decimals right similarly in each case we will try to keep our answer up to three decimals so area is 45.998 meter square this is our second step now the third step is what was our third step step number three was to find out the parameters of channel or canal okay which is represented with p with it parameter and parameter means we need to find out the value of y x and all these things let's try it out So for parameter as we discussed in our previous lecture that we consider trapezoidal section right trapezoidal section and trapezoidal section and the slope with a slope side slope it's not but slope side slope we assume is 1 by 2 horizontal to 1 vertical right we already have discussed this in our previous lecture so let's try to draw the figure and try to understand it we have a trapezoidal canal or channel right 
and we are given with few things let's the slope side slope is 1 and 1 divided by 2 right this is the side slope and the other things given to us are we need to find this this is B right we need to find this and this is depth y we need to find this too similarly the distance from here to here is also b because if you draw a perpendicular line from here and a perpendicular line from here this distance will be equal right if this is b this is this will also equal to the b and remaining distance this is x and this is x got it and for slope and one more thing we know that we have find in our uh, design steps step number three let me show you there were few important formulas we have derived these are the formulas right this is to find x this is to find the area and this is to find the slope got it for slope 5 y square divided by 4 and x is equal to y by 2 and cross sectional area by plus xy these were the formulas we are going to use them to find out the parameters so let's see bring up the blue pen So what was the formula for area cross sectional area is equal to uh, let me see the formula I forgot the formula let me check it out let me check it out let me check it out the, this one by plus xy by plus xy so the formula is area is equal to b y plus x y right can we take y as common it will become y into b plus x and from this slope we got another formula which was can we write it as 1 divided by 1 by 2 will be equal to y by x is this right because you can see that for this triangle this is the base right this is the horizontal side and this is vertical side and slope is 1 for vertical and 1 by 2 horizontal so we just compared the slope and sides, sides of this triangle so we can write this as 1 by half is equal to y by x square got it because this is the slope of the side slope of the canal so from here we can find the value of x x can be equal to y by 2 can we replace here the value of x with y by 2 the area will become y into b plus y by 2 when we further simplify it it is going to be yb 
प्लस वाई स्क्र अपॉन टू ओके सो इन आवर केस वी हैव एज्यूम द वैल्यू ऑफ वाई टू बी 2.5 मीटर राइट वी हैव एज्यूम दिस हेयर हेयर इट इज 2.5 फ्रॉम टेबल वी हैव एज्यूम द वैल्यू ऑफ वाई 2.5 मीटर एंड area we already find out the value of area cross sectional area in previous step which is 45.998 45.998 right meter square so the only thing remaining is b so from this formula we can find out the value of b right so just put the values in this formula a is equal to y b plus y square divided by 2 a is 45.998 meter square which is equal to the value of y is 2.5 and b we are supposed to find plus value of y is 2.5 meter whole square divided by 2 when you solve this equation for b you will get the value of b as 17.149 17.149 and the unit will be in meters okay we got the value of b the next thing we need to find is slope but slope is already given to us bed slope is given to us what is bed slope bed slope given to us is 1 by 4000 it's already given to us so we do not need to find the bed slope we found the value of b and uh, we already have the value of y right so this step is done the next step is step 4 step number 4 is calculation of hydraulic radius which is r right so the hydraulic radius is going to be we already have the formula right for hydraulic radius what is the formula for hydraulic radius formula for hydraulic radius is r is equal to cross sectional area divided by weighted parameter area divided by weighted parameter so we already have the value of area but we don't have the value of weighted parameter so first we need to find out the value of weighted parameter for now name this equation as equation 2 and first try to find out the weighted parameter what is weighted parameter if you draw a cross section of a canal then let's say this is the water level so the weighted parameter will be the part which is being wet due to the water right right this side slope this bed and then this other side slope these three the combination of these three will be the weighted parameter of the canal and what we got we already find the value of b right this one this is 17.149 meters
and then we need the length of two sides right what are these sides going to be these sides are going to be let me draw this triangle first let me show it up here this one this is the triangle right if you draw this triangle here it will look like let me draw it with lines it will look like this right this side is y this side is x so we need this one right this one is slope so this is going to be equal to under root x square plus y square am i right and this can be equal to can we replace this x square with y by 2 because we know that x is equal to y by 2 right if you replace it it will become uh, y square divided by 4 plus y square am i right so we need we will put this will be the formula for our slope y square divided by 4 plus y square so this side is going to be equal to under root y square divided by 4 plus y square right and this side is also y square divided by 4 plus y square and under root so the parameter is sum of let's say this is side a, a b c parameter will be equal to weighted parameter will be equal to a plus b plus c so we need to sum up these three p is going to be equal to 17.149 plus b and c are equal right same so you can write it 2 into under root y square divided by 4 plus y square we already have the value of y right this is separate we already got the value of y we just need to put the value of y here so p is equal to 17.149 plus 2 into <coughs> under root y the value of y is 2.5 square divided by 4 plus 2.5 square when you solve this equation for p you will get the value of p as p is equal to 22.739 22.739 and the value, uh, unit will be in meters okay now we got the value of <coughs> weighted parameter sorry we just need to put this in equation number one equation number two sorry equation number two we already have the value of area now we got the value of weighted parameter hence we can find the value of hydraulic radius so the hydraulic radius will be equal to cross sectional area divided by weighted parameter cross sectional area we already found it what was the value of cross sectional area that was 45.98 right 45.998 45.998 divided by weighted parameter is 22.739 22.739 meters it is meter square and this is meters so you will get hydraulic radius in meters when you divide it you will get the value of r as 2.022 2.022 meters you got r right 
this was our step number four now let's move to the next step which is step number five step number five and the la this is our last step right step number five we need to find mean or actual velocity which is which we represent with v okay step number five so what is the formula for uh, finding the uh, actual or mean velocity we know that from uh, Chase's equation Chase's equation tells us that velocity actual velocity is equal to c under root r s okay what is r r is hydraulic radius we already got it s is slope we have the value of slope which is 1 by 4000 it is given to us the only thing we need to find is c c is c is sorry it is chase's coefficient right chase's coefficient so to find out chase's for coefficient cutter has given us a formula right the formula given to us by cutter to find out the chase's constant is chase's constant will be equal to 23 plus 0 0.00155 divided by s s is slope plus 1 divided by n and then all divided by 1 plus 23 plus 0 0.0015 divided by 1 double 5 divided by s and then multiply it by n divided by under root r this is the formula to find out the chase's coefficient now let's see what we got in this formula in question we are given with uh, we just need value of s n and r right n is cutter's velocity coefficient which is given to us in the question which is equal to what was the value of cutter's coefficient 0 0.023 right 0 0.023 it is given to us in the question the cutter's coefficient here it is the cutter's coefficient is given to us which is 0 0.023 okay so put that and put the value of slope in the equation and we already got the value of r hydraulic radius which is 2.022 2.022 this is 2.022 and s slope bed slope this is bed slope is given to us which is 1 divided by 4000 so we got everything right we just need to put the values and calculate it so when you put all these values into the equation and solve it for c you will get the value of c as 49.373 49.373 now put this in equation number Three, name it three put value of C 
in equation 3 so equation 3 will become what was equation 3 equation 3 v is equal to c under root rs v is equal to c under root r s we got the value of c what is c 49.373 49.373 under the root value of r hydraulic radius we got the value of hydraulic radius as 2.022 multiplied by slope is given to us which is 1 divided by 4000 just put the values in calculator and solve it and you will get the value of v which is actual velocity or mean velocity and the value you will get is 1.110 meter cube per second got it so the next now the final step is now we need to compare the values of v and v naught right as we had uh, we have two conditions if v is equal to v naught then our assumed depth is okay it's fine but if v is not equal to v naught then we need to change the depth either increase it or decrease it we have also discussed when to increase and when to decrease so let's first compare them the values of v and v naught let's see here is the value of v 1.110 and what is the value of v naught here is the value of v naught v naught is 1.087 so let's see 0 1.0 v naught is 1.087 so let's write it down here v naught is equal to 1.087 meter per second and value of v is equal to 1.110 meter per second so what is this this is show, uh, following the second condition v is not equal to v naught so v is not equal to v naught so the depth we have assumed what we have assumed we assume depth sorry we assume depth is equal to 2.5 meter right now it's wrong we need to change it and redo all the steps now for change we have discussed two things we have discussed two things two conditions if v is greater than v naught then increase the depth if v is less than v naught then decrease the depth in our case what is the condition v is greater than v naught right our uh, actual velocity is greater than critical velocity see our actual velocity is greater than critical this is actual velocity and this one is critical velocity so v is greater than v naught so what we need to do we need to increase the 
depth we have already assumed and then we need to redo all the steps so let's assume depth change the value of depth to let's change depth from 2.5 meters to increase it and we can take any value like 2.55 2.6 2.65 so it is actually a hit and trial method right so i have already tried the value 2.55 and 2.6 and 2.65 i have tried three depths the correct answer you will get is 2.65 meters so you need to try at 2.55 and then 2.60 got it if we now we are going to put uh, try those methods again and again it will take a lot of time so i am directly taking the correct value which i already got it so we will try all the steps with taking y as 2.65 so we need to redo our steps from step 1 to step 5 wherever y is 2.5 we need to replace it with 2.65 everywhere in each step other than that everything is same okay so I think you can uh, put the value of y by yourself and try that try all the steps again and you will get the end results now I am keeping that to you now you just need to replace the value of depth y in each design step and then find the value of uh, v and v not then again compare it when i have done all those steps again i got the value of v i got value of v as 1.129 1.129 meter per second and the value of v not as 1.128 meter per second so now with the depth as 2.65 the value of v and v not are equal which is equal to 1.1209 they are approximately same so that means that the depth for our canal is 2.65 2.65 is the correct depth for our canal right so now <coughs> our uh, alluvial canal is designed so what are the design parameters we got from all these steps let's write them down what is the depth what should be the depth of this canal the depth should be sorry depth should be 2.65 meter depth and b what is going to be the breadth of this canal the breadth is going to be b is equal to we already found found the value of b 
15.401 meter one thing you need to note it is that we we found the value of b here this one right 17.149 meter but this b was uh, when we use the value of depth is 2.5 meter right but in the second trial we have changed the depth to 2.65 so when you will use 2.65 in place of 2.5 you will get the value of b as 15.401 meters okay and then the slope slope is already given to us side slope this is 1 and this is 1 by 2 and the bed slope bed slope is 1 by 4000 and what else I think that's it and V and V naught our actual velocity will be 1.129 meter per second and our critical velocity will be 1.128 meter per second so the discharge given to us in the question was 50 meter cube per second right we need to design an irrigation canal which can carry 50 meter cube of discharge so if you construct the the canal with a depth of 2.65 meter and a breadth of 15.401 with a bed slope of 1 by 4000 and side slope of 1 in 1 uh, 1 in half then this canal can then with this condition this canal can carry 50 meter cube per second discharge okay so you need to construct the canal with a depth of 2.65 meter breadth of 15.401 meter and side slope one in half and bed slope one in four thousand then with these dimensions and with these conditions the canal may be able to carry water with a capacity or discharge of 50 meter cube per second well, this is done so i hope you will try the steps with 2.65 meter depth because i have skipped those steps we already have done the steps for 2.5 meter you need to do the same steps the only thing you need to change is you need to replace the value of y which was 2.5 meter with 2.65 and you will get new values for v new value of c new value of r new value of p which is very parameter and new value of b and new value of a and new value of v naught so this and the value of everything is going to be changed by changing the depth so for this design you need to consider the new depth which is 2.65 meter but actually Kennedy's theory is a bit lengthy the next theory which we are going to discuss is Lacy's theory in uh, so Lacy has made some amendments in Kennedy's theory and that that method is considered to be far more better when it comes to the results so we will try to solve the similar and numerical in Lacy's theory too and we will see the differences and Lacy's theory is not that lengthy but Kennedy's theory is actually time consuming and very lengthy because we need to do the hit and trial method right we need to change the depths again and again if it is not correct if, if it is not uh, 
satisfying the conditions then we have to change the depths i hope you guys got the steps of the canary theory if there are any queries or any issues you can ask me in comments we can do some more you know, numerical problems if you want otherwise uh, we will move forward to the glacis theory so see you guys in next video with our new theory for designing of alluvial canal that is glacis theory till then goodbye and take care